Thank you very much. Well, hi everybody. I'm so happy to be talking to third graders. Um, you guys are one of my favorite audiences to work with. Um, I'm not sure what is so awesome about third grade, but I hope you're enjoying your year so far. Everybody, how, how has your year been so far, your school year? Good. I'm glad to hear that. Have you gotten any snow yet? Wow, that is pretty incredible. So, um, if you guys don't know where I'm coming from, uh, the reason that we're doing this over video conferencing is because I'm in Redmond, Washington State right now, and Redmond is right outside Seattle. So, um, maybe some of you know Seattle from pictures of the Space Needle um, or the Pike Place Market. Those are some of the famous landmarks. So, Redmond is very close to there. Now, we're famous for being a rainy city, and we haven't gotten any snow so far. And so, whenever we hear everyone else talking about their foot of snow, like it's no big deal, we get really jealous. Um, so, I'm glad that you told me. Now, if you're wondering also why this 14-year-old is speaking to you all the way from um, Seattle, it's because I have some things that I would really like to share about reading and writing with you. And I know that I'll be learning a lot from you as well over the course of this presentation. So when I was seven, I published my first book, which is called Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And it's all about short stories, writing, um, how to make characters and settings and plots. It's a pretty fun read. So I wrote this when I was seven. And then my second book, called Dancing Fingers, is a book of poetry. And I wrote this um, when I was 11. It's actually a bunch of collected poems from both me and my older sister, Adriana. So as you can see from the books that I've written, I really love to write. And I've been writing actually since I was four years old. And I would just write every day. I would sit down on the computer and I would just type up hundreds of short stories. Not all in a day, over the course of many, many days. But writing was just something I loved to do all the time. Now what about you guys? Do you like to write? Would you call yourselves writers? Just raise your hand if you would say that you're a writer. I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. Excellent. Great. So, the funny thing about being a writer is that when you hear the word writer, what do you think of? Like, what kind of image comes into your mind? Can I have one person tell me, what sort of image comes into your mind when you hear the word writer? You think of Dr. Seuss, great. You think of Dr. Seuss, maybe you think of your favorite children's books, like I Love Green Eggs and Ham Perfect. So maybe you think of Dr. Seuss when you think of a writer. Let's have someone else's image of a writer. It could be you think of Dr. Seuss. It could be you think of, um, it could be just an image, like someone bent over a piece of paper writing furiously. It could be a specific author. Okay, writer, 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 Rick Riordan. Rick Riordan, great. So I bet you're a fan of his books. Wonderful. So we think of Rick Riordan, we think of Dr. Seuss, uh, I think of C.S. Lewis. We all have our authors that just come to mind right when we think of writers, right? So if you ask yourself, what do writers do? There's a pretty obvious answer, right? Right. But I'd like to say that being a writer is about more than just putting words down on paper or typing them up. Being a writer allows you to travel to different worlds. Being a writer allows you to have great adventures. Because of my writing, I've been able to travel to 27 states and I think 11 countries now. And it's all directly linked to those first words that I put down on a piece of paper, which is pretty amazing when I think about it. My traveling and my speaking all started with my writing. So writing really does allow you to travel, both virtually and when you write books about things happening in other countries around the world, that really does allow you to see things with a new eye. I think that writing makes you a better person because suddenly you're seeing things from another point of view, right? You have to write about things and realize how different characters might look at an issue. So writing does all sorts of things. When you say, I am a writer, you're not just saying, I'm a writer. You're also saying, I'm an adventurer. Um, I am a traveler. I am a better person. I am a bit of a spy. And this is a funny one. But being a writer has made me watch people, watch events, and look for things I can draw out and use in my writing. So 
being a writer includes quite a lot of things. Now when you sit down and you decide, I want to write something, where do you get your ideas? From math, science, and the computer lab? Great. Wonderful places to get ideas. When you, she said outside where it's beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, that, I really misheard that, didn't I? Um, outside where it's beautiful. Yes, definitely. I go outside all the time to get inspiration. Um, and I just love looking around. And sometimes, you know, you can look at the giant landscape. You can look at the beautiful forest and the mountains or the setting sun. And other times, you can look at something very specific, like a flower or a bird. So let me get two more people to tell me, where do you get your ideas from? I'm sorry? She gets her ideas from television and looking at things that she enjoys watching. Okay, from television and looking at things that she enjoys watching. Very good. I love getting my ideas. I, I'll read a book and maybe some word in the title will make me think of something else and it'll set me off on a whole other journey of ideas. Great. So we get ideas from the things that we watch, the things that we read. What's, your, what's the third one? Holidays, great one, very appropriate, right, at this time of the season. Yeah, we get our ideas from holidays. Um, probably a lot of you are looking forward to holidays. Maybe um, you're seeing decorations starting to go up all over the place. So you could write a story about an enchanted gingerbread man. Oh, wait, that one's already been written. Well, you see the point. You can have lots of material to work with when you think about the holidays. So we get our ideas from all types of places. I went to share a couple of... Um, Close this. A couple of ways that we can all get ideas. Um, tip number one is to observe the things around you. Um, you can really get ideas everywhere. You could get ideas from a sidewalk blanketed in thick heaps of leaves, or your grandmother who has one really funny habit that she um, that she likes to, maybe it's for instance, knitting sweaters compulsively, and you could turn her into a character in a story. You can really look at your life for current events, people and animals, nature, the books you read, objects, travel. All of these provide great ideas for stories. Now, I'm sorry, I know I'm blocking the screen a little bit. I'm trying to orient myself so that the lighting isn't too bad. How is it over here? Does it look okay? Uh, I can tell you the lighting is a little, you're silhouetted. Yeah. I'm really a bit... I can go like underneath the projector. Um, it'll be a little bit, a little funny looking. Okay, let me also try one. Okay, now I'm really definitely. Um, sorry for the for the lighting issue. I didn't realize this would be such a problem. Well, back to the presentation. When you look at your life, you find so many ideas, items for inspiration in a story. Now we talked about where you get some of your ideas from, holidays, television, everything outside. And we're going to be putting some of those ideas to use in a story today. Another thing is that, uh, have you ever heard the saying, curiosity killed the cat? Raise your hand if you just heard that saying before. It's a fairly old one. I see actually a lot of raised hands, great. Well, the thing with curiosity killed the cat is that we're obviously not cats, so it really helps us as writers to ask lots of questions to be curious. Why is this happening? What um, is something that goes on in another part of the world? You can ask all sorts of questions when you watch the news, when you read a book, and it gives us some awesome what-ifs as well. If you think about science fiction or fantasy, you realize that the authors must have, must have had a lot of what-if questions. What if time travel were possible? And you get a whole lot of books out of that. What if dogs could talk? I'm sure that's been the plot of quite a few movies and the question behind it. 
What if people could travel to the center of the earth? There's a book um, that's uh, where characters are doing exactly that. What if people could travel back in time? What if a volcano erupted in your town? What would you do if a volcano erupted in your town? You would run away. Okay, so maybe your story could, it might start very dramatically. You would describe this very calm, peaceful mountain, and then suddenly lava is bursting out, and smoke is rising into the air, and everybody sees it and just starts running, and there's this giant group of people that's just running away from the city, and I'm sure that you could make a story about it. There might be some complications, like maybe your character starts running and then realizes, oh no, I need to rescue someone, and goes back into the city. And the great thing about stories is that you can do absolutely anything you want. So if you want to have a volcano erupt in your town, and time travel is possible, and an alien come to land there, you can do all three. Although it might give you a bit of a complicated storyline to work with. What if scientists invented a giant tomato? You could have interesting, interesting stories built off that. What is the kind of story you might build off a giant tomato? This doesn't seem like you're a very dramatic question, but what kind of things do you think might happen? You could make a grocery store with only tomatoes, and this would be every it was kind of this big tomato would be diced and sliced and every way you think of tomatoes. That's a great idea. So this grocery store with only tomatoes. Now when we're making a story, we need to keep a thing in mind, and that's what is one thing, well actually there's a few things, but what is one of the things you notice that all the stories you've read generally have? I'm sorry? A problem. Excellent. So if we think of our, some of our favorite stories, in Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss, for instance, then this character really doesn't want to eat green eggs and ham, and the other character is really trying to get him to eat green eggs and ham. And so the whole story is him trying to convince this person eat green eggs and ham, and now I'm forgetting the names of the characters, but the, the whole problem is built around, I don't want to eat green eggs and ham, and, but you should try it, and it makes for a really interesting story. You also have some more complicated problems in the Chronicles of Narnia, that the, the Pevensey siblings end up in Narnia and they have to fight the White Witch in the beginning. You have all kinds of problems. It could be a problem with somebody else, it could be a problem with yourself, but characters and stories generally face some kind of problem. What would happen if you didn't have a problem or a conflict in the story? No, not really, I'm sorry. Very good. It would just be a story going on and on and on with no mystery, no genre. That's right. If you just um, if you just had all kinds of description, if you were just talking about, oh, the princess lived in the castle very happily and she had a beautiful coat and every day she ate three giant meals on a table made of gold and all of her servants were very happy. Is that a very fun story? No. So what we end up doing is inserting that problem, we make it interesting, and we manage to... Uh, box keeps on popping up, sorry. And we manage to capture the reader's interest. So these what if questions can lead us to some very interesting plots, but only if we make sure that there, that there is a problem or a conflict somewhere in there. What are some other important parts of stories? We have our setting, characters, plot. Does anyone want to give an example of a story setting?
Great, so Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory takes place in a small town, also takes place in the Chocolate Factory, right? Very good, so that would be setting. Characters, so if you, um, all of your favorite books will probably have some really interesting characters in them. If you think of Harry Potter, or if you think of um, Lucy Pevensey in The Chronicles of Narnia, for instance, or what are, someone else wants to give an example of a favorite character, maybe add why they're your favorite character. So if you if you read any of the Harry Potter books, you know that Harry Potter has to fight Voldemort, and that's a good example of a of a very long conflict or a problem. We all have our favorite characters, and the reason I asked you to think about why your character is your favorite is because we can take that and use it in our own story that we're going to be writing in just a couple of minutes. And I'm going to be asking you for suggestions on what sort of setting, character, and plot we're going to have. So make sure to get those ideas started. Plot is what happens in your story. So, number one, um, someone walks to the park. Number two, they see a dog being kidnapped at the park. Number three, they decide to help uh, find the dog and who kidnapped it, and it could go on. So, in your plot, you do have that introduction of a problem, who sees the dog being kidnapped, and the character somehow gets involved or is involved with that problem. The setting is the place and time where the story is set. The characters are the people or animals in the story. There are usually a few main types of characters. You have your main character, the person whom the plot revolves around. That's the Harry Potter, or that's the Pevensey siblings, or the people in Green Eggs and Ham. Seems like you've forget it. So, for instance, if you have, uh, let's say you have a royal family here, and here's the king and the queen, and the prince and the princess, and here's this funny guy over here with an eye patch, maybe he's a pirate. Now let's imagine that the setting is a castle, and the royal family is living happily. The main character, or protagonist, is the princess, and the villain, or the mean guy, the antagonist, is this pirate who decides to come in and kidnap one of the royal family members. I know I'm thinking a lot about kidnapping right now, but the, and then somehow the main character or one of the supporting characters has to stop. So that would be an example of a very basic plot and some of the characters. So what is, I want to quickly block a few of the words here, what is the good person in, or the main character in the story called? The princess is the main character, but what is a word that applies to all the ma all main characters? It's a pretty fancy writing term. The protagonist. Very good. So if you look at the word protagonist, if you get protagonist and antagonist mixed up, just remember that if you see A-N-T in front of something, it will often mean against, um, that's one of the root words, so for instance if you're anti something, it means you're against something. The antagonist is the person who's against the protagonist, and if you think of pro, if you're pro something, then that means you're for it. So the protagonist, you can think of, associate pro kind of with good, or the protagonist is the main character, but usually the person who we are sympathetic to. So we. We want the princess to win or to defeat the, this antagonist in the story. So protagonist, antagonist, supporting characters are different types of characters that you'll be seeing. The plot is what happens in your story, the storyline. And I want now to brainstorm for the story that we're going to be writing together. Who wants to come up, help come up with a plot? Raise your hand if you want to help come up with a plot for this. She wants a tornado. Okay, so I think we have our problem then. The problem is a tornado. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can start typing. 
and I might look a little dark up here, but going to open up a Word document. So our problem is a tornado. Great. What about characters? Who do you think our main character should be? Um, for the main character, you sure. Come, let's come up with a name and say one thing about the character. So, for instance, Mary Ann, and one thing is she's very generous. It's a princess. Okay. A princess. Now, what is what is a trait, a character trait of this princess? So when we think about character traits, they're the words that we use to describe our characters. If you've ever heard somebody say about you something like, oh, you're very smart, or you're very nice to people, you're generous, kind, something like that, it could also be a weakness. So maybe this princess has a real sweet tooth, or maybe this princess um, is not very nice to people. You know, you can come up with weaknesses as well as strengths. So, someone give me a couple character traits for this princess. Determined and, sorry? Frightening and determined? Okay. 
okay. you want drinks? Let's insert a prince here. It's funny how this story is becoming so close to the example, like with the prince, the princess. Okay. And I think, now something interesting here is usually we see that the bad guy or the villain is an actual person. But in this case, it seems like our antagonist is almost the tornado itself because she has to run before the tornado comes and the tornado is quickly bearing down on the village. So it's kind of interesting to see how the tornado is almost the bad guy here. And that is that brings me to another thing about writing is that you can kind of break rules. And there's no rule that says an antagonist has to be a person. It could be an animal. It could be even yourself sometimes. There are stories where the main character's antagonist is themselves. If you've ever thought about it that, um, that way, you might realize, oh, sometimes I am my own worst enemy, right? If you're trying to make a decision between two things, and part of you really wants one thing, and part of you wants another, you're kind of being your own enemy right there. So, in this case, the tornado is our bad guy. And I think it's interesting to see that come out in the plot. All right, so we have two characters, Princess Sophia, Prince, someone throw out a name for the prince. Name for the prince, sign. Little 
So now Sophia sees that there's a tornado, she looks out at the sky, and she realizes that the clouds are kind of gathering, it's starting to turn this weird greenish color, and um, anything else that happens in tornadoes. So this would be a great time if you want to make, if you want to continue this story, I really encourage you to do so. So how would you go on and continue this story? Well, you would just think, what happens after the tornado? When she finds out about the tornado, she goes running. What does the sky look like during a tornado? This would be a great place to do some research. Ask your science teacher, what happens in a tornado? What does it look like? So you can learn about tornadoes while you're having fun writing this story. And there's so many great ways to pull in ideas from science class, from everyday life. How would you run and warn the villagers if it was tornado? So I really encourage you to continue this story, but I guess we're running out of time now. Do you have to go to lunch? Well, I, I, well we, have, uh, we have some time for questions, and we want to make sure that uh, we get, um, we get uh, as many questions as we can. I think, uh, I think 10 minutes should do it. Okay. And so we should, we should be able to finish up just before 12. Do um, you want to get to some questions? Sure, okay, so if you guys have some questions, this is a great time. Okay, uh, Joseph. What inspired me to be a writer? Yes. Well, I would say quite a few things. One was that I loved reading. I would read Dr. Seuss, I would read Arnold Narnia. I had all these favorite books. In fact, if you see here, uh, the way that I designed the area around the board, you'll see there are lots and lots of books just stacked up on high. So I loved reading, and I would read these books, and I would think, well, these authors are writing and they're publishing their books. Why can't I do that? So I started writing, and I would write hundreds of stories, and I decided that I wanted to do something with this. So I sent out a big manuscript um, to many different publishers, got rejected a lot of times, and finally got a book published. So that's, I was inspired to write by the books I read. What was your last book? What was my last book? Um, my last book is called Dancing Fingers. It's um, a collection of poetry that I authored with my sister. And the great thing is about writing is that you can explore so many different types of writing. I love short stories, but I also love poetry and novels and nonfiction. So make sure that when you're writing, don't just write stories about one thing. Expand. And so poetry, Dancing Fingers. Then yes. I've written two books so far, Flying Fingers and Dancing Fingers. Gentle. Do you have any ideas for the next book you're going to write? Do I have any ideas for the next book I'm going to write? I have a few lined up. I would really love to write another book of short stories. I've been writing quite a few. Um, but one thing with my short stories is they always seem to be about old ladies, and I'm trying to, again, expand my reach a little bit, uh, so I'm not writing about just one thing. Uh, so maybe short stories, a book of short stories, and another book of poems. I've been writing a lot of poems, and um, possibly a novel. I did something called National Novel Writing Month in November, which is where you have to write 50,000 words. 50,000 is quite a lot. That's about 100 pages, give or take. So, and in one month, and I did that. So maybe, who knows, maybe I'll try to um, edit that up and get it published. Jeremy, next one. How many books do you think you will write? How many books do I think I'll write? 
over my entire lifetime? Well, that's pretty hard to estimate. Let's say I write a book every four years and I live until I'm a hundred. Okay, maybe I will live until I'm I hope so. Well, um, I'm not sure if I can do the math involved with that. Okay, <laughs> joking. Um, let's, I would say maybe about, I would love to have written 50 books, I think. I would love to have written 50 books. There. What do you think is, I'm sorry? Your poetry uh, interest. What do you like in poetry? What do I like in poetry? Well, I love all kinds of poetry. Um, I like Shel Silverstein. Has anyone here read Shel Silverstein poetry? I'm seeing how people raise hands. You love Shel Silverstein too? Great. So Shel Silverstein is a really funny author, writes a lot of poems, a lot of humor. I love funny writing. Um, Jack Kolecki is another great author. For funny poems. I also like more serious poems. I've been reading um, poetry by some uh, older poets from like uh, um, in the 1800s and such. So I really like um, Longfellow and Th um, not Thoreau, sorry, Whitman, a few others um, from that time period. So I like to read both funny and serious poetry. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite type of genre? My favorite type of genre. Oh, I really love fantasy and historical fiction, and I I also read contemporary, more contemporary fiction, but fantasy and historical fiction is always my favorite. Kayla. Is your sister an author? My sister is also an author. We work together on Dancing Fingers, our book of poetry, and the great thing is, is that her writing style is so different from mine. She's very expressive. Her poems don't rhyme as often. That we don't compete too much because we're so different. Now, Gina. Why do you like reading? Why do I like reading? Well, let me ask you, why do you like reading? <laughs> she doesn't. You don't like reading? Okay, well here's, there are quite a few very good reasons why you should like reading. And one of mine is that when I was little, I would look at these books and I would realize, wow, these books can really take me places. Because, you know, I was, five years old. I had never been to Russia during winter. I had never been to Timbuktu. And so suddenly here were these books that could take me all around the world. I could see what it was like to be there or to hear the sounds, to be that person. And I really enjoyed that it gave me so many experiences through reading. And sometimes I'll start talking about my travels and I'll get some of the things I read in books mixed up with the places I've actually been because books made them so real for me. And that's one of the things I like about reading. Um, is that it takes me places. And reading is just fun. I mean, the, if you don't like reading, it's probably because you haven't found the one book that really makes you, makes you excited, makes you think. So try um, asking your teachers, your friends, for some really good books to read. Great. My favorite book, oh wow, I have a really long list. I have some of my favorite childhood books, I have some of my favorite classics. Um, a lot of my favorite books are classics, so some ones you probably haven't read. But I really like um, The Book Thief by Marcus Susak. Uh, I like A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front, that one's definitely a bit more high school level. Um, and also Harry Potter, The Chronicles of Narnia, Red Wall. Some of my very early favorites, and uh, the Lord of the Rings. Stephen D. My favorite writer is Stephen King. 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 It's really all around, and books are one of the greatest sources, so I would take a look at a book. I'm trying to 
Uh, okay, so for example, even a non-fiction book. So right now I'm looking at this one called We the People, the Citizen and the Constitution. It's all about government. You'd think, oh, I can't get an idea for a story from a textbook or from a non-fiction book. But you really can. Because I could look at this picture of all the founding fathers gathered around to write the Constitution, and I could think, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to write about that from the point of view of someone who is sort of spying through the door. You know, I just came up with that idea right then from looking at this picture inside this book about government. So, when you think I can get ideas from books, it could really be any type of book, and I get them quite a lot. Okay, so Dora, we're going to do one more question, and then we've got, we'll, we'll part and wave, and I'm sure we'll get all excited and say goodbye. But last question from Cy, please, Library. Um, when you write a book, do you make it picture books, or just put words in Mostly I'm, I'm just writing, so for instance, my first book, Flying Fingers, you can see it's a, it's a pretty thick book, um, I'm not sure if you can see it with the bad lighting, but it's about 300 pages almost, and most of that is writing. I do have some little illustrations here and there, but it's definitely mostly writing. My poetry book, Dancing Fingers, though, has drawings all over the place. There's drawings on the front, each section um, has a big drawing, there are these little, so whenever I'm writing out like animals, there'll be a little animal or a ladybug or something in the corner. It's very, this book is very, it has a lot of pictures. So I've never written a picture book quite like a picture on every page book, but that's maybe you've just given me an, another new project. And this, uh, well, Dora, just I, want to, I want to thank you very much. I know we will be seeing a lot of each other in the next uh, week or so. And uh, why don't we all say goodbye and I will uh, shoot you an email. <laughs> And I really enjoyed having the chance to talk with you guys. You're all amazing readers and writers. And I hope that you each um, go home, continue this tornado story. I would love to see all kinds of this plot going in all kinds of different ways. Look up tornadoes, what they look like, and write about it. Have fun with it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Well, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. So definitely I'll have to improve the